Hello, Fast Fam. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Craig Lieberman, and I've been tinkering on cars since 1980. I've owned more than 40 cars in my life. Some were heroes, some were zeros. But never in my wildest dreams would I ever guess that three of my cars would go on to star in a motion picture franchise. My Supra, my GTR, and my Maxima all had starring roles in Universal's Fast and Furious movies. Over the next three years, I'd serve Universal as a technical advisor. I helped choose the cars, procure the parts, oversee their builds, and support both production and post-production. I've got some great stories to tell, and that's why I created this channel. It's time to talk about the Tokyo Drift Mustangs. I say Mustangs plural because although we only saw one car at a time, there were actually six or seven of them on set. If you don't know who Sean Morris is, he's basically the guy that helped get GTRs into not only the first two movies, he's largely responsible for getting Paul Walker to become a fan of the GTR. Welcome back everybody, another episode and another appearance with Sean Morris, the man, the myth, the legend, the GTR guru. Uh, he is the king of GTRs in the United States. He's probably forgotten more than most people will ever know about GTRs. But today we, we have a special treat. We are going to talk to him specifically about your pet project, the Tokyo Drift Mustang with the RB26. How did you even get that call to do that project? So I was actually, the first time I heard about it, I got a call from Toshi, to Toshi Hayama. Who was a tech was, advisor. Yeah, right, who was a technical advisor. And he says, he says to me, hey, I'm looking for a five-speed transmission for Skyline. And, and he's like, yeah, we're working on a project uh, for Universal, for Fast and Furious, and we're putting an RB26 in a Mustang. And I was like, <laughs> Whoa, what, the, what the hell are you guys doing? I just started, I was like, I don't, you know, I didn't really know, I didn't really hear anything about it. And I, so I just, you know, I, and so that was the first time I really heard about it. And then... Later on, um, John Weiser actually called me and said, hey, you know, we're doing this project. This is what we're, you know, this is, this is where we are. Can you come and help us? And so I worked out, you know, deal with John, and then I went over to, um, then they were in... Uh, By Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium, yeah. and there's like kind of that, that, that area. That nook right there. Right, right, yeah, so over there. And uh, the car wasn't there. The car was actually getting um, built by a place up in Valencia called Tricy Engineering. And so I went with John, and kind of we talked about the car a little bit. We went up to have a look at it. Let me pause for a second. So we went up there to have a look at the car, and they had the, the engine out of one of the cars from, from Too Fast, Too Furious. So it had an R34 RB26 in it uh, with a rear-wheel drive transmission. They were kind of fitting it up. They didn't have the turbos on or anything else because the shock towers on the Mustang, they didn't really have enough clearance to put the twins and all that stuff. And so I started to talk to him about it, look at it and said, okay, what made me sense is just put a single turbo on here. And then I also said, look, you need to take this engine out of this car. You need to put it back in the R34. I've got other engines I can sell you you know, the, just a regular R32 right. engine, you know, for a few thousand dollars, I don't know, probably $2,500 or $3,000 or something like that for the engine. That way then you have a complete running R34. That's worth money. You know, it's worth money and not a shell that you guys have to push around and make, no, make worth nothing. Put the R34 back together. We'll put this other engine in this, in this car because they needed a, um, an oil pan and some other stuff too. And so I had an RB25 oil pan and so, I go up there and I work uh, at Tri-C with them a little bit on uh, putting an oil pan in, doing some other things, got the uh, single turbo manifold. And, um, and then I also, uh, I worked with uh, Turbonetics and um, you know, we got a turbo for it and some other, and an intercooler in that. So um, I'm pretty sure Reggie over there, Turbonetics. So you know, when, when it comes to like a movie car and stuff, I just like, I, I, I think I talked to Reggie and I said, look, I want the most basic, the most standard, the most nothing turbo I can possibly get. Just something like easy, easy to get to replace, easy, cheap, you know, cheap and easy. That's what I want because it doesn't need to be anything special. It's a movie car. So we got a 60-1, which is real basic turbo. But then, so what I, like, I was noticing, like, you know, a lot of the cars, they had, like, a big, the big turbo kind of sitting out off the mm -hmm. side of the engine a bit. And so what I, what I, said to the guys from Tri-C, and also just even a little bit for clearance, was they built the standoff to make the turbocharger sit up and forward. So it's a small turbo, but if you look at it, it's kind of sitting like forward and up, and that's intentional to kind of make it look like a bigger turbo, kind of present well, you know, like here's the turbo, you know. 
so instead of being like tucked down, you know, because it's a movie car, right. you know. So again, so and we were going to see the engine. They actually, we were going to see the engine. Right. We we're going to see exactly what it was and what it wasn't. Um, and so, and then you know, the way that the story progressed was that the S15 in the engine, instead of having an RB, I'm sorry, instead of having an SR20 in it, it had an RB26. And now that's an interesting thing. Because there's a lot of people in the world, and I run into this all the time, where somebody says, that's not an RB26, it's an SR20. True, an S15 has an SR20 in it. But it is possible to swap an RB26 into that car, that chassis. It's hard when you have to argue with people about a car you've built and that you worked on. I'm sure you may or may not know this, know this feeling, but when you were actually spent all this time in this car and somebody on the internet is says, nope, it has an SR20 in it. Yeah, well, the thing, <laughs> of, the thing of it is is that I, I've learned through having a crazy Italian father that you need to be very clear in your communication. And the, the way I would probably preface that after I, somebody hit me up 400 times was, well, yes, the car comes with that motor, but it is like it is plausible that somebody would pull that motor out and do a motor swap on that car. Right. And so we were we didn't say that it came with that car or uh, that the RB26 came with the car. Say so it was in that car and we took it out and so forth. And here we are. Right. And and again, it's but even you know I actually built a, a mock-up engine because we I, I, you know so there was a good engine in the car and then they asked me to build a mock-up for the S15. So they had one of the crash S15 chassis and then I had spare parts. And if you look at it, it looks like spare parts. If you really pause the movie and stuff, and 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 you'll see, there's like, and it was literally just sitting in there. I mean, there's no mounts, no nothing. I just put an RP26 in there, and you'll see, it's like, you know, if you watch some of the videos, of even they even use that same engine um, when they're trying to like, you know, they're they're doing the, like the insert shots of them, you know, putting an engine in. You'll see like it's kind of cut up a little bit. And so, the car was at uh, Tri C Engineering came back, um, I got an um, AEM ECU and for the car, and uh, we installed it, started the car up. Single turbo, you know, I did some basic, you know, make sure the thing was going to run right and all that, all that kind of stuff. I really wanted to put on a dyno because, you know, I mean, so everything was set pretty conservative. I told them, you know, they have to run race gas in the t car all the time because yep. you never know what the guys from there are going to do. Um, but, you know, it had street car conservative setup. It was on spring pressure, you know, not mm -hmm. running any real amount of boost or anything like that. And so, um, it, uh, but it ran good. I mean, it ran. What kind of power did it make that so that everybody's going to next, that's going to be the next question. I think, so Sport Compact Car, oh no, Edmunds, no, Sport Compact Car tested it. I think it made 350 to the tire. That's the number that's six so, in my head. Yeah, so it made about 350. Now the thing is, Edmunds tested it. They did some like uh, zero to 60 and quarter mile right. in it. And so it did like uh, low fives to 60 and did like low 13s at like 109 miles an hour in the quarter. Just rear wheel drive? Rear wheel drive with the 19s on the, you know, with basically the drift setup that mm -hmm. it had in it. Which are not, you know, cheater drag radials. No, 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 it was on a re regular old 19 inch tire. And, and that's so, what a lot of people forget. Well, it should be faster. Well, yeah, if it was on a race suspension and drag tires, yeah, maybe. Oh, if it, if I would have known and I turned it, I mean, it was like, I said, it was on stupid timing and stupid, like. Conservative timing. It was on movie car, people are going to be moving this car and driving it. And so, like, I don't want it to die when they're doing it. So, you know, it, it would have been, I would have turned, I mean, I would have run, I think it only was running, like, you know, 
11, 12, so, 13 pounds of boost or something. What so, transmission was in the car? It had an RB25, so FS, FS uh, 5 r 30 okay, so, so it's the same trans as in like a 300Z, the same that are in these except for all-wheel drive. The same, it's in a Frontier, exterior. It's in everything, basically. What about Nissan. the rear end? What were you using with the rear end? There was a, a regular uh, uh, four nine-inch rear end. Oh, Jesus. So, what a bastard car. So... <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it, had, it actually had pretty good suspension and stuff underneath it. And then, you know, the thing is, like, you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff out there about the car. And, like, you know, what some people don't understand is that um, there's, there's a hero. Right. Right. And, there's, and then there's other there's stunt cars. And so they build one hero, nice car. You don't want to mess it up. You don't want to damage it. You don't want to do stuff to it that's going to cause it to be, if they have to use it to shoot some nice pictures, they don't want to have a damaged car. So... You know, they didn't really use it for any of the drifting or side to side or clushing together and all that stuff. And then some people said, oh, it can't drift or it couldn't do any of that stuff. Or, and, you know, the, the thing was that, so when we get back to this Edmonds video, so they had some of the V8 cars and stuff like that. You know, it was 347, yes. blah, 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 so all they, this other. They all had 347 crates. Something, or something, a something like that, right? And so that car... The cars with the, the drift cars, mm -hmm. I think they may have tested a few of them, and that was about a 14 second at 90, low 90 mile an hour car. 93 mile an hour. So something, something like that. that. Yeah. And so, the, so if we know about weight and horsepower and all the rest, the RB powered car set up as basically I let anybody drive it went 109. Right. It so made a lot more horsepower. So it was a 12, <laughs> it was a 12 second car. Yeah, it so made a lot more horsepower. Right. And so, and you know, I mean, horsepower, turn tire, torque, trust yeah. me, it didn't have a problem. Um, you know, like anything, it required some revs. You, you had, know. I think, was it six or seven cars? I have to look. I think we've said we've about, talked about it. Maybe about, yeah. yeah so. so all of the other ones had V8s except for the Hero One car. Now, like Sean was talking about, when you, in the, the movies that we've worked on, and I'm speaking for myself and you right, for the right. first movies, you have a Hero One car, which is the prettiest, shiniest, nicest, cleanest car that you have. Uh, all, the jing all the gadgets on it are supposedly going to work if you need interior shots, right. um, you know, all that fancy stuff. And then a Hero Two car is a car that is cosmetically identical to the Hero One car. Maybe it doesn't have the engine stuff, but we, maybe we, we will be using that car for for a backup in case something happens to the Hero One. Then you have Stunt One, Stunt Two, and then if you go more than that, you have Stunt Three, Four, Five, Six, Seven. Right. You have a process buck car where they'll do some interior shots on or some... His, him, a his, buck means they cut it up. And that's the mic rig, really. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, so, right. So buck Different might be, bucks. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, you got the mic rig shell car. Right. Um, the, you got the process car, which like on, on Fast and Furious 1, they put one of the Supers on a hydraulic rig, a shaker machine. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah. So Brian driving through the desert, and the Super, right. it's all done on, on right. a soundstage. Right. And when, so you have a bunch of cars. So they, because they did so many stunts, that's why they had six or seven Mustangs. Yeah, because they're crushing them together yeah. and all that stuff. And so, they, of course, they're going to have cars, you know, you, the amount of money that they're spending basically every second the car the car every second they're filming out there on set all the people all the craft services all of the lighting lighting electric all the, riggers all those people there's 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 like hundreds of people out there and so then if they go to get in the car and that car doesn't start it doesn't work it, something doesn't happen it's costing them Lots of money. Lots and lots, lots of, money. of money. So they have to have backups. They have to have more than one car. They have to have all this stuff. And so your point, they have yes. to have a bunch of different cars because if they don't start, you got to have a car right there on set ready to go. Right then, right then. You got to, you got to, you know, somebody's got to be able to get in that car, move that other one out, figure, figure it out later or whatever. And on set, there's always going to be picture car guys. And the picture car guys are there, you know, basically responsible for them. And, and so when the Mustang was on set, I was responsible for that car, and so I was there with the car, make sure that it worked. If it didn't work, then it would be Sean, make it work, or whatever it might be. But you I refer, actually, are you referring to the Hero One car? The Hero One car. Okay, the other cars are responsible of the picture car picture guys. Picture car guys. And one of the things that you do, one. as you remember, the commonality of parts is, is, cr is crucial in yes. the picture car business because these guys can literally, they have to be anywhere in the world and be able to get parts for these cars, right? So if they're working on a Mustang, a small block Ford, there's parts for that at every track, our chief auto parts, oh, I'm talking about auto parts stores, I don't right. even know. There have to be parts for those cars at every auto parts store, whether you go to Pep Boys or, right. or uh, anywhere, auto parts, right? right. Yeah. right. 
So that's why they put these small block V8s in them because the parts are readily available and the brake rotors and all that kind of stuff, it's all available. Yeah, and even, you know, wheels and all this stuff, even just the, the swapping between the different picture cars and stuff like that so that they can, they can you know, keep one going, keep cars going. So it's, it's really important. So then back to the, back to building the Mustang. So then when we were, we were there with the Mustang and, and it came down to picture car and they had to do the painting and all the rest of the stuff on the car. And me and John actually decided on the color for it. And we, you know, we put together some of the other things for the cars, you know, we're, um, if you look at the Mustang, like it has an exhaust, it has like the exhaust kind of goes off the side, mm. you know, the HKS style, like, yeah. like that's intent. The, 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 the tip that's on there, I did intentionally like that because I really wanted it to be like this, this, American car with this Japanese, you know. So that's why if you look at the exhaust, the exhaust, and it's not only because the first time they installed it, they installed it straight. So it's coming. I'm like, no, you no. gotta, you gotta turn it so that it's coming like out the side to hurt some feelings, <laughs> right? You know. So it's kind of like it was an Arc Seven. They're kind of a little bit out the side, and and the, and the picture car guys are probably going, what the hell is going on? Right. And and so and then you know like the 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 cam cover, the valve cover. Mm -hmm. You know, um, at first we had it like body color of the car, and then it didn't really make sense with the movie. There was like, hey, they found this engine, they put it in the car, and you know overnight, and they buffed it, and then like the car all you know kind of came out, and so. And so then, you know, we're talking about different colors. And so I did the um, basically like the 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 the, the NUR color engine. Mm. You know, the the, the I like the, the engine came out of a NUR, NUR and it was yeah. a little bit of a, a tribute to Tamora. A little mm -hmm. bit like you know, here's this is like a you know, so because we had red, so we had we had black, we had green, we had like gold. <laughs> That's what we you had, had. Like different colors at different times on the on the engine of the car, yeah. Because <laughs> and uh, you know I I wrapped everything up and you know I I kind of hid some of the things here like uh, you know I took I, I I did some thing you know I think we had a polish collector and stuff and it was you know it kind of prettied the engine up a little bit to make it look a certain way. Yeah. And, so what and, happened to the cars after? You know I. I so you know, once I was done, my part of it, yeah, I was done. That's it. I was done. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And at the end of it, they're like, you know, supposedly they gave it to one of the producers or something, or and then maybe it went, and and you know, I said, if I, you know, if I would have known, I'd like, you know, let me take the car and actually like clean up some of the stuff or put it on a dyno and make, yeah. you know, make it, because I mean, the car shouldn't have a problem making. It, but, 400 wheel on 91 But the or thing something. of it is, is that there, you get, we, we have to talk about the time gap here. After Too Fast, Too Furious, which was released in 2003, yep. Tokyo Drift was three years later. Yeah, and then and the thing about at least Tokyo Drift, and when I was working on it, you know, the thing is, you know, and I, I know it's said before on some of the other stuff too and on the first ones, but the cars are the stars. Right, right. The cars are the stars on, on Tokyo Drift. And so then when we were working on that, that the cars were characters. Right. right. So, so all of the cars that were there were, were basically characters on the on the set. So, um, and yeah, when they were done, they were done, and they got rid of them, and and you know, I've never seen that car again. So, so then, you know, you went a few years. The recession hit a little later, 2008, 2009. We started yep. seeing that. But I saw, you know, YouTube didn't really start until 2005. It wasn't really a thing until, right. you know, 2007. Instagram wasn't around. Facebook right. was in its infancy in 2007. So tracking those cars, there's a dead zone period where automotive forums was all we had. So tracking those cars, all I knew is that in 2012 when I started looking again is that a lot of those cars had gone overseas. And the reason for that is because after Tokyo Drift with no Vin Diesel in it, that movie was the worst making movie of the franchise up until that point out of the three movies. It just didn't make any money. There was no Vin Diesel in the, in the movie. It made money, but it didn't make what the Wait, first... It was, in there. it was just in the very, very last second. Yeah, as an afterthought with <laughs> right. the Justin Lin deal, deal right. to set it up for four right. and all that. I tell right. that story in another right. video. But essentially what happened was is that people had lost interest in the tuner culture. Um, you know, there was all kinds of stuff going on with the different drag series and consolidation and NHRA. I won't get into all that because it's, it's a long story. But what happened was is that people in America just didn't want those cars. They didn't think the movies were all that big. They certainly didn't think they were very good. You know, the average person, a lot of people who like us who grew up with them, they love the movies and they love the cars. But people weren't buying them at auction, so off they went overseas, and a lot of them are still there. Yeah. And I, I said, I don't even know. I, I mean, I heard that the Mustang was in like a museum in Illinois. There's a, there's a museum there that has a bunch of stuff, but you know, I don't know. You, sometimes you don't know if what car it actually is, right? right? Because you look at it from the outside or what somebody says something is. Mm -hmm. And you know, a few pictures from 
you know, 75 feet away, it's like, yeah, right. You, know, you have to see the, a, yeah, you you know, have to see the see, VIN number. Yeah, you have to see it up. I mean, obviously that car, you know, look underneath the hood and it's yeah. pretty obvious of what it is or what it isn't, but. There's one in Europe. I was in uh, Norway two mm -hmm. years, two summers ago. And there's one there that was one of the, the crate motor cars. Right. But I mean, it could be something like, you know, the same like this, where even, you know, I mean, somebody, people have built real, real replica, close replicas, right? Close oh, enough, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? There's so, a lot of people who get semi close. There's a lot of people who get really close. And there's right. some people who are like, uh, I'm just going to paint it, put the wing on it, the decals. Right, right, right. right. So, 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 so the same with even the Mustangs and stuff. I mean, although, you know, it's not really a, uh, not really the car and the demographic to fit, like, you know, it's, it's kind of weird, right? You know, I mean, it would be a little strange for like, you know, Mustang, uh, if you had a fastback Mustang, 67, 68, because they were actually, there were 67s and 68s. So I, there's like some slight differences in them. I don't know Mustangs that well, but yeah. I know that there were 67 and 68 and there was a little bit, uh, there were both. So, so, and like you said, they, you know, the differences in them are very small. But back to your point about uh, people who would be looking to buy a replica, I mean, one of the movie cars, uh, people who were buying 67, 68 Mustangs, they're probably going to make it look like the bullet car. Right, because exactly. Because that's right. the that's car the that icon. everybody right. knows. And right. the Tokyo Drift Mustang, unless you're a, a rabid Eleanor. fan of <laughs> Eleanor's. <laughs> have you, have you heard of that? Have you, yeah, heard, of, have you heard of that so Mustang before? Yeah, <laughs> so that Eleanor, those Eleanor Mustangs, those are relatively, so, you know, you start to get into those those uh, those fastbacks, which are, you know, all the money, you know. Six-figure cars now. Right. So, you know, um, if you're going to do it, you're probably not going to build a replica from, you're, if you're going to build a replica, it's going to be an Eleanor. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's going to be a bullet. It's going to be... You know, so it's, and, and so it, it's a, it was still, it was a fun car, you know, and I've had people ask me and you know, people show me and show different stuff, you know, different American cars with like two Jay-Z's in them and one Jay-Z and, you know, some other cool stuff, weird stuff out there with RB26 or whatever in it. And so, um, you know, as a personal thing, again, when they very first came to me, I was like, I just, I blew them off. I thought it was funny. And then when I actually had it and ran and drove it and did all that, it was fun. It was a, it was a fun, silly car. I mean, it, it uh, you know, it, it definitely, you know, had all the good sounds and all the rest of the stuff. It did, it did right. So. Yeah. I wonder what car they used to record that. I know. What, who was it? It was, it was Milano's car. Really? Yeah. It was RB. It was a car. It was RB25. RB25 was used for the engine sound. With a 30, I think it had 3076 on it or something. Single turbo. Single turbo. Yeah. So, and I had, uh, you know, I was helping Chris out a little bit with some stuff. And I only tried to punch him about one time, maybe two times or something like that. Oh, Chris, he was a, he's a, he's a character. You know, he's kind of a junkyard guy and kind of a little, you know. Out, I haven't out, talked to him in years. He's, 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 he's a little, he's a little out there. But, um, you know, he, um, uh, uh, so he, they use they use his car for that. Interesting. So, I wonder I what he's doing these days. I have no idea. I lost track of the guy. <laughs> John Weiser, just to go back for yeah. people who don't know, John Weiser recently passed away this year. It's uh, in the 2019. Year, right. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. We read yeah. right. We've started. So, so John Weiser passed this last year in 2019. He was uh, kind of like the rain man of picture cars. I he worked was... with him in Florida for a few months on Too Fast, Too Furious. And I mean, if you needed to find uh, a wheel for a 1991 Nismo something or other, right, right. And, and he would know where one was buried in a cave well, in Tibet. Or he would find somebody. He would, you know, I mean, John was Wizard Motors and that, and then he's, uh, you know, he would just be sitting there with his Rolodexes of stuff, and he'd a call you. A literal he'd, he'd, Rolodex. He would, call, he would call me up, he'd say, hey, do you know where a something something is, or we need help with this? And I actually bought quite a few cars for him um, and through the year. For Tokyo Drift, we actually bought, um, uh, we supplied them with the, also the Mercedes and then a lot of the mm. background cars for that. Um, you know, if you, if you notice, like in the parking garage, there's like Nissan Maximas and yeah, like, like proteges yeah, and yeah. stuff, and they're all like pastel colors yeah. because they needed some background cars and they just, you know, they, they needed stuff to crash into. And it was, Obviously, that film, Tokyo Drift, filmed in L.A., mostly. Hawthorne Mall. Yeah, right. And so they, when they needed stuff to crash into, we, we sold them a lot and of those crash We cars. provided the background cars for the right. downstairs parking structure. 
where right. the girls were sitting on and all right. that kind of yes, stuff. And right. then they reused some of the movie cars that they had left over from Two Fast and Furious. We had the race car there. You had the race car? Yeah, it was, I but, you know, it was a, we had the race car there at the Hawthorne Mall at, at one point. But that, but so, so, so those crash cars we again we got them for John and. You know, the picture car people, uh, you know, it's a, if you ever work for the movies, it's an interesting process. Um, it's an interesting thing because, you know, you have these art directors, you have regular directors, and you have people that are used to getting what they want and also uh, changing their mind and it'll sometimes on a little bit of a whim. And so, you know, you may have, they may come to you one day and say, hey, we need, you know, five uh, red Nissan Maximas. So you go and you go and try and find them. And then they call you back the next day and they say, hey, actually, we need them black. Okay, cool. So, you know, now you kind of line these cars up and all that stuff. The next day, actually, red. And so it can be a slightly frustrating at times. It can be a little but you know, I mean, I always told people, you know, the, the, the money was good always. The, uh, that side of it, you know, it was worth a little bit of frustration. Um, and, uh, you know, they were obviously, they would pay. You know, the, the, like it's not like a, you know, a, a regular consumer. So as long as you can get them what they wanted. But um, John was, you know, he was my contact there um, for, let's see, uh, I, I worked with him a number of cars, a number of different things. Uh, the most recent things that I got for him were uh, Bentleys. I got mm -hmm. um, salvage Bentleys for the one where they had the submarine and, and when is that seven? Seven maybe. I is don't that know. seven? Is that seven? The one the one there was there was a Bentley Continental because I got some of the stunt the white ones. The stunt Yeah, I, I don't know. The one I, with the, the harpoon that shot out the maybe front? I, I, that Tyree strove. I, I if I told a, you if I told you I didn't I haven't watched it. Would you believe me? I would. So, if but I did supply them cars for that if movie. If you're over 35, you're probably not watching the so, movies anymore. So, so I, um, but but yeah, we we bought them a couple of Bentleys for that, you know, and stuff, and and you know, they were like stuff where bad engines or flood damaged cars mm -hmm. and stuff that they needed, and and so um, I, I helped them get those cars, and so um, and then uh, yeah, I would, you know, I would get a phone call from John every every few months. And he would send me an email through and. Sometimes you go on a little rant. I mean, the last one I had a really good rant. <laughs> I had a really good rant with him about about the movies and about what was going on and about oh man, it's a definitely kid. things I could not say on a video <laughs> about some of the the inner workings. It'd be inner workings and some of the people. Oh yes, and some of the actors. So um, yeah, there was some. There was there was a little bit of. There was this really good, good. Uh, after this camera goes off, I'll even tell you it was kind of funny. So, but uh, but yeah. So I mean, I really like John. Um, you know, even when we raced the R34, we were out there in Florida. He came out. He brought us food. He, yeah, he's, you know, he was, he, was, he was a good guy. He was you a know, good and, guy. Uh, and like I said, but I, he I, really I was him, so. like fucking Rain Man. I mean, he, he's just a guru, man. He would just be able to get fine things and. You know, I don't know how much people really appreciated sometimes getting some of those. I mean, it, it, it's hard to get those parts, those things, oh, yeah. that stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, he needed a, uh, you know, when they had the um, the Hako and stuff like that, they needed a windshield because, you know, they pull the windshields out and they needed a windshield. And so, you know, I mean, John knew that, you know, we could get one and so, or, you know, helped, you know, mm -hmm. and so. But, you know, the same, you just got to have those contacts of people and, and, you know, I mean, then sometimes they would, you know, because it is the movies, they can do silly things like they can fly people with the part. I was just going to tell that story. <laughs> yes, it's too right. fast that happened. <laughs> right. The Ferrari window, they broke, they needed yeah. another one, so they flew it. They put a guy on an airplane. Right. From so, England. Yeah, they same just have GTR some, parts. they right. have just have somebody like pick up this part, get on a plane. You have a passport. Get on a plane, yep, pick up this part, get on a plane, bring it to us. Because that's the fastest way you're going to get it in your hand. Way. And, they, and they, they have the, again, the, you cannot sit around and, and not, have, not have those parts because everybody else is costing money, thousands and thousands of dollars.